Let's try to resolve some problems. There's more than what I pointed out in the last video, but in the last video I pointed out the increment. We're not incrementing enough, and we're also not... Uh, we shouldn't be doing this add here at the beginning of our loop. Why did we have this add? We initially had this add to drop this 2 to the 1 into our total. But then we do another add, so it's kind of like we did an add out here in front, and then we said add 2, add 2, multiply, add, multiply, add, so on and so forth. So we're breaking our pattern here by doing this initial add. What are some ways we can get around that? Well, one way we could do that is control L to cut this line out and control V to paste it right there. We only want to do that addition once. We could also just start total out. Remember, total is being stored in ECX. We could start total out at a 2, and then we no longer need to do this, this add. So really, we, we could just say move into ECX 2, and that would start out our ECX, our total, at 2. But I, I kind of like this add ECX power. Let's, let's, let's start it out at 0, and then add the power in. All right. But uh, again, this hopefully this is starting to smell bad to you. This is what we call s code smells. It's like, oh, well, we want to add this one, and then we want to add this one. No, no. So we're doing these special cases out here at front, and then we get into the loop, which should grind it all appropriately thereafter, but we have to do some special cases. Ah, this should smell bad to you, and it does. And it does. We will get rid of the smells. Don't worry. In the meantime, let's see if our our poor approach here can at least solve the problem, and then we can refactor or clean our code up to make a more elegant solution. And the only reason why I'm even taking this poor approach instead of showing you the elegant solution up front is this is kind of the approach that my son took. My son is new to programming, and you're probably new to programming. You're probably new to assembly programming, at least. Uh, otherwise, you're probably... Well, I'm not sure why you're watching the playlist. But anyway, if you're new to this, that's fine. This I, I like to show these beginner... Uh, approaches and then modify them from there. I'm also having a hard time understanding what my code's doing. Notice we have a lot of code now. All right, we have moves and multiplies and oh, where are we at and what are we doing? And it's hard to keep track of all this. And this is a simple assembly program. It pretty much fits all that can fit on our screen if I zoom out far enough. All right. Yet, assembly is still cryptic. It's hard to read. It's hard to maintain. That's why a lot of people don't like using assembly language, because it's just not one of those easier, high-level languages, like C++, and even C++ is challenging, but not near as challenging as this. And then you get the really, I hate to say it, fluffy Tinkerbell languages like C Sharp or, or just super high-level, which is fine. They have their purposes, blah, blah, blah. We're down low with the processor here. I'm rambling and I'm on a soapbox. Let's try to comment our code a little bit so that we can kind of keep track of what's going on here. First of all, do you recognize these lines? They are increasing our power but to the next power. So 2 to the 1 is 2, and 2 to the 2 is 4, and 2 to the 3 is 8, and 2 to the 4 is 16, so on and so forth. So I'll just say next power here, put a colon here, kind of pointing that we're going to Go to the next power. And, oh, by the way, Jamie copied and pasted that code right here. So let me copy and paste this comment. Look at that. That's one nice thing about copying and pasting code is once you do something to one piece of code, you need to remember to do it to the other piece of code. Hopefully you're remembering that copy and paste is bad. But we'll drop the comment there anyway, and we'll address this issue in a future video. What are we doing here? We're essentially doing these ads. Here's an ad. Here's an ad. Here's an ad. So let's do add the power to total. And we could probably get away by reading the code and seeing that, but if we can't remember that ECX is total, a nice little comment helps us out there. Again, we're using registers over RAM where we can. Then what are we doing here? Let's see, next power right here, we move the power into ECX, so now we multiply the current power to the total. All right, let me grab this and try to make this kind of look like a box when I do stuff like that. All right, and then uh, we'll say repeat if necessary. Necessary means our, our count. So now we have some nice commented out code. We moved that initial add out here, which kind of makes me feel weird about the beginning of our loop, but whatever. We'll address that again. Uh, repeat if necessary. Let's, uh, let's address the problem with count. Count is not incrementing fast enough. Alright? 
When we're done with two to the one, count should be one. And when we're done with two to the two, count should be two. And when we're done with two to the three, count should be three. Yet, when we initially hit this down here, count was zero, and we had pretty much done two to the one plus two to the two times two to the three. So, a couple ways around that. First, is we can initialize count to one. Again, this should be smelling weird to you, but let's just go with this kind of non-elegant approach. We'll initialize count to one because we're doing two to the one right here, and it is not inside of our loop. Right? So we'll start with count being one. We'll do the add of two to the one, like so. And then down here, when we do this power, and then we do this add right here, that's this add right there. At that point, count should go to one. So ink count. So then we'll, we're, we'll be two to the, or count shouldn't go to one, it should go to two. All right, we've done count to the two. In fact, I'm actually going to move that, control L, control V. When we go to the next power, I'm going to increment count right there. That makes sense. When we go two, we're at two to the one, we go two to the two, so count should be consistent with this two power right here, not the base, the power up there. And then same thing down here when we, oh, again, <laughs> Remember we copied and pasted code? I copied and pasted this code right here. So to be consistent with what we're doing right here, I need to put the increment count right there. Oh, I hope you're seeing that that uh, copy and pasting code is bad because now I have to double modify this one and I have to modify this one and I need to remember to do that. But we'll fix that in a future video. This ink here it uh, basically takes our 3 to be consistent with the power that we are currently at. So 2 to the 3, like so, ink count. And then we multiply and repeat if necessary. So this is getting better, but it's not perfectly elegant. But let's let's step through this and, and see if we're, we're, we're headed the right direction. All right, let me, oh, look, I still have those highlights there. F11 into, or Control-Alt-D first, F11 into do it. Move into EBX. All those sort of things. I want to make sure we're at the same address. Looks like our addresses have changed, and, and so I need to update our address here. This is this is the power, though. So where's count? Count's going to be four bytes less than the power. So let's grab this one. Control C, paste it right here. Hit Enter, and there we go. Count. Look, I said we were going to start count out at one. I initialized it to one, so it is one. And then our power is currently two. So we have two to the one. So these two are at least consistent with each other. Two to the one is 2. Alright, let me find our yellow line again. Moving to EBX2, we'll keep the base right there. XOR ECX started out at 0, but then we need to add to ECX the value of our total. We need to add to it our current power, so that's, again, that is this initial add right here, this pseudo add I've placed at the beginning. So let's do that. Our total goes to 2. And then here we're going to increase our, our power. Remember, these three lines right here are going to take us to the next power. Or, uh, actually, it's four lines. Next power right there. I forgot we added this increment count there. So let's do it. Let's move it into EAX, our current power. We need to move it into EAX because the multiply, look, it implicitly put the EAX value there. Take our base, which is 2. Multiply that 2 against our current power and now we're at four and then shove it back out to ram here the current power will bump up to a four and then we're going to increment our count so we're going to go from one to two and now here's the add we're going to add the power the current power at this address here we're going to add this value into our total so ECX it will now be two plus four which will take us to a Six. Moving to EAX. Here we go. Next power again. All right. Here's all the code, the four lines that make up our next power. So notice, let's just pay attention. I'm going to F11 through these four lines real fast. Our power here should go to eight because four times two is eight. So F11, F11, F11. Here we go. Here's eight. Increment our count. So two to the two to the three is eight. So we're now at least consistent there. That's nice. Now it's time to do the multiply. Let me bring this back up. We we finished with 2 to the 3. Now we need to do this multiply against the total. So let me let's let's right here. Let's let's move into EAX the current value that is at our power. Multiply EAX with ECX. Again, ECX is keeping track of our total. 
So now we have the total of 3, 0 right here. We can valid, verify that with our table here, 3, 0. Now we need to move that value. We just multiply it out of EAX back out to ECX. So ECX is keeping track of our total. Isn't that kind of a pain? I, I mean, it is the architecture. We'll deal with it. And this probably steps you up to a little bit more of a... You're not a novice assembly programmer anymore. EAX, if we want to do a multiply, and this equation that we're currently working on has more than just one type of multiply, we are forced to use EAX. So we're doing a lot of swapping here with EAX. Let's compare against 5. So we are at 2 to the 3rd. 3, which is the value stored at this memory address. This turns into a 3, if you would. 3 minus 5, that will give us a negative number, which means we're less than. We've seen that in the less than videos. Jump, and let's do it again. Now, I'm not going to walk through this whole loop again with you, but I am going to go down to that jump less than, put a break point there, and I'm going to hit F5, and if you remember, hitting F5 will basically step through all this real quickly. And at the end, if we've done our work right, then our chart here, let me put some white behind this, we should be at 2408 for our total, which means our total should be 800. Let me, let me uh, get that off the screen. I'm going to hit F5, hit this break point, F5, look at ECX, which tracks our total. Hey, it's 800. It is the correct value. So I'm feeling pretty good about this so far. And I hope you are too. And I could confidently, <laughs> I could confidently change this 5. Say I want to go from 2 to the 5th on up to 2 to the 100, like I've outlined before. And yes, we, we will hit overflow before we hit that location. But if I want to... Then all I need to do now is change this to 100. Okay. Anyway, sorry this video got a little long. We still have issues. The code is good. It is correct. It is not elegant. All right. Can you see some other places where it's not elegant? I'll tell you. Most of the non-elegance starts right here, and by tweaking most of this up here, and maybe some of this down here, there is some redundancy here. This redundant code is this code right here is redundant with this code right here. We need to fix that as well. But we'll do that in the future videos. You try doing it yourself and then come back and 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 watch and see what I end up doing.